Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for spending some of your time here with me today. I really appreciate it. We're going to have a look at how I made an art journal page today. This is the page I've created. I've used an assortment of supplies on this. I've used distress inks, I've used acrylic paint, I've used stamps, I've used rub-ons, um, stencils, and some matte spray, some dimensional paint, some heavy gel, and a real assortment of um, items. I'm doing the page, I'm creating the page um, in my Happy Notes book, the Happy Planner, it's a notebook. Um, I wanted to have a spiral bound or a disc bound journal so I bought this notepad and I've stuck two pages together with gel medium to give it a bit more thickness it was too thin to use as an art journal with just a single page so um, I've done that because it's disc bound it allows me to take the page out and work on the page and then return it to the to the journal I start by um, attaching some old book paper to the background. I just tear the edges of the paper and attach it using some heavy gel. I'm actually using gloss gel because um, I'm going to put a coat of a light coat of gesso over the top of this so the gloss is not going to be a problem to me on this page. I'm not a gloss person. I generally have a matte uh, finish to my pages but I'm going to use this gloss gel just to try and use it up. Now that the gel is dry, I'm going to apply a thin coat of gesso all over the page. I do this and when it dries um, the print is still too heavy so I do end up giving it a second coat of gesso. When the gesso was dry I took it to my trimmer and trimmed off all the pieces that overhung the edges of the page. To create my background I just decided to use some distress inks and I'm applying them with a, a foam um, tool. I'm using mustard seed, scattered straw, twisted citron, peeled paint and broken china and I'm just applying those randomly to the background. I do use my heat tool um, occasionally to dry the inks before I apply the next layer. I use this Dilutions um, mini stencil called Diamond in the Rough and my Broken China Distress Ink and just um, apply a bit of the ink through the stencil randomly on the background for a bit more dimension. I use the same technique with some of the black soot distress ink. Using this uh, Kaiser Craft clear stamp called Stains, I used my jet black stays on ink and stamped randomly about my page and then using the same stamp and encore gold ink I applied a few more of the splatters. Using a deep red stamp called Water Droplets Background, I stamped with Distress Ink and also the Stays On Jet Black Ink onto the background just to add a little more detail. The 
The Distress inks are not waterproof and I didn't want my background to move around when I started adding other products on top so I used a boil matte spray which is clear to seal my page. I sprayed it using my old dirty old pizza box and um, then left it to dry. I took this uh, Kaiser Craft stamp, it's called Child's Play and I cut that center out of that bigger circle there so I'm creating two stamps out of one and I'm going to use my um, stays on ink once again and I'm going to stamp those circles randomly on my page. Because I want to overlap the circles I've cut myself a couple of masks and um, I use those so that I can put some circles in front and some circles behind. I want to apply some different coloured um, acrylic paints to the insides of the circle so I give the insides of the circles a coat of gesso just so that I've got a good base and um, the opportunity to block the background colour out. I actually ended up giving it two coats of gesso so I had a nice solid base. Now I've taken um, some acrylic paint from my um, ceramic days, they're Duncan brand. One's called Sunshine Yellow, one's called Sunrise Orange and the other one is a Decor Art Christmas Red. I um, apply or just put a little bit of that onto a palette, a bit of each colour and then use my soft half inch wide shader brush to apply the colour to the circles. I'm using a sort of double dip um, method to do this so I'm loading my brush with the lighter colour, dipping one corner into the darker colour and then going around the circle in a circular motion with the darker colour to the outside. Once I've got all the circles filled in using this technique with the yellow and the orange, I then do the same thing with the red. Um, I dip my brush into the yellow, a little bit into the orange and then a little bit into the red and just go around the outside edges of the circles to bring in that third colour and give it a bit more dimension. Now I take my food ball pen and start to do some doodling around the edge of the page and then I also doodle on the inside of the circles giving them a bit of detail. I use my food ball because I thought it was waterproof. It says on the pen it's waterproof but when I actually wiped over it with the, a wet one it smudged so after I'd finished doing all the pen work with the food ball pen I also gave it another coat of uh, the gloss or no sorry the matte spray just to make sure everything stayed in its right place. 
This is where I found out that the food ball pen was not waterproof. I used a fine liner with some watered down acrylic paint to do a bit of white doodling and I didn't like the look of it so I wiped it off with a baby wipe and that's when the food ball pen smudged so I had to fix that up and then I decided to use my scribbles which is once again from my ceramic days and um, it's similar to um, any dimensional paint it's just a dimensional paint and um, I just put some spots here and there on the page um, to give it a bit of white and a bit of a lift once I'd finished that I got my fine liner out again with the white watered down acrylic paint in it and went around the border and around the outline of the circles because I felt that I still needed a bit more white on there. To add a bit more to my background I chose these Sizzix rub-ons from the pile of rub-ons that I have. They are called Background Weave and I rub them onto my page randomly in about four or five places. These um, Kazercraft rub-ons um, are fairly old and from memory they're called Inspiration, yes, Inspiration. And I chose my title from this, it's called Imagine. So I've cut that off of the sheet and I apply that using my rub-on tool for my title. I'm quite happy with the way the title doesn't jump out at you. It um, is there if you're looking for it, but it's not the main attraction. That finishes the page for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. Um, I've certainly enjoyed having you here. I um, have enjoyed making the actual journal page as well. So if you have enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my channel if you don't already and uh, share my video with your friends. If you do subscribe, click the bell next to the subscribe button so that you are notified each time I upload a new video. Thank you.